Well, in the laboratory or the classroom, a common reaction that produces hydrogen gas is the reaction of zinc metal with sulfuric acid. The zinc metal would be a solid, sulfuric acid would be in solution. The zinc will replace the hydrogen and the sulfuric acid because metals replace other metals. Metals can also react with the protons that are in acids or in water occasionally. When the zinc kicks out that hydrogen, the elemental form of that hydrogen is the diatomic gas, H2. And so that's H2 gas, and the zinc sulfate is okay as it is. Another single replacement reaction that you saw earlier was the zinc solid reacting with the lead to nitrate. The zinc metal here also reacts and kicks out the lead. The elemental form of the lead is not anything special, so it's just the lead metal, but then the zinc and the nitrates are together, whereas before it was the lead and the nitrates. So this is also a single replacement reaction. Another reaction that you already saw was the aluminum chloride and the bromine. Notice here that the bromine is replacing the chlorine. This is because they're both halogens, they're both nonmetals. So a, an elemental nonmetal will replace the nonmetal part of an ionic compound. When the bromine replaces the chlorine, that chlorine is diatomic, again, remembering Brinkelhoff, that chlorine is Cl2, and the aluminum bromide then is the product rather than the aluminum chloride that we started with. The final type of reaction is a double replacement reaction, and in a double replacement reaction, everything really is dissolved in solution, and what you're seeing is you're seeing the effect of everything that's in solution that can react. And so if we think about the HCl and the NaOH in this double replacement reaction, the HCl is really dissolved into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. Again, not because it's ionic, but because it's an acid and those are the ions that are formed in solution. The sodium hydroxide is also dissolved into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. And if you think about those being around in solution, well, that H plus and that OH minus could bump into each other to form water. And the formation of water is a driving force for double replacement reactions. The chloride and the sodium that are still around, they could come together, especially if you dried off all of the water to make the sodium chloride salt. So notice that the sodium and the hydrogen switch places. They each replace the other in the compounds they were with. So this is a double replacement reaction. Here's another one with a different type of hydroxide compound. So the hydrochloric acid and the ferric hydroxide can react. The ferric hydroxide is a solid, and this is in fact one way that you can get this to dissolve, is by reacting it with an acid. The H and the iron will replace each other, when they replace each other, the HOH is actually water, again, which is the driving force. The FeCl would just be FeCl. And then when you go back and you think about the first step in writing balanced chemical equations is to balance the charges in the individual compounds. The iron is three plus and the chloride is one minus. So we need three chlorides here. Because we have three chlorides here, we need three HCLs. Because we have three Hs and three OHs, we make three waters, and then we still just have one iron on both sides. We'll take a look at the reaction of calcium chloride and phosphoric acid. The calcium and the hydrogen switched spots, so this is a double replacement reaction, and it formed HCL which we said was a gas, which could be a, for, a driving force, formation of a gas. But even if we said that was still dissolved in water, we've got the formation of the calcium phosphate solid, 
which is an example of the formation of a precipitate. To come back and think about what double replacement reactions are, double replacement reactions are really two ionic compounds that switch parts. And ionic is in quotes because the key is that the compounds themselves do not have to be ionic. HCl is a molecular acid. It is not an ionic compound, but it does produce ions in water. So what will produce ions in water? Well, ionic compounds and another type of compounds, which we'll talk about more when we do solutions, called electrolytes. But acids are electrolytes, okay? Acids and bases. So even if there was a different base that didn't have hydroxide in it, that was still a molecular base, we would still, to some extent, think about that as though it was an ionic compound, depending on what it was. Um, so again, double replacement, two ionic compounds, mostly which switch parts. Single replacement, a single element replaces a similar element in a compound, kicking it out into its elemental form. So notice the zinc here was an element by itself, and the hydrogen here is an element by itself. Combustion is always a fuel, typically a hydrocarbon, but that could also contain sulfur and nitrogen. So a fuel reacting with oxygen, the products will always be CO2 and H2O for a complete reaction. So this is one of the assumptions that we're making. And if there is sulfur or nitrogen in the fuel, then you'll also make SO2 or NO2. Decomposition is only ever one reactant, and that one reactant breaks down into more than one product. So this is not decay. Well, maybe it is, but we don't normally think about calling decay decomposition, although the two are synonyms. And then synthesis, there's more than one reactant coming together to make any product that is larger than any single reactant. Many of the ones you'll see will have one product, but you could have more than one product in a synthesis or combination reaction.